Hello there Cancers, welcome to your tarot reading. I hope the video finds you well. I hope that it is still um, helpful for you, still relevant for your situation as we, you know, navigate the energies. And I hope you enjoy the month as well. So, um, without further ado, um, let me just uh, talk about what came out when I shuffled the cards, okay? Um, I feel like the theme of this reading is a little bit heavy, okay? And I believe I did Scorpio's reading, so the, the energy for Scorpio was a little bit heavy. And I feel like for you guys, it's a little bit heavy, but it's very different from what would plague a Scorpio, um, what would bother them, the energy here is different. So let me just uh, relay some of the messages and the images that came out in the pre-shuffle. So first of all, I see this like nighttime park scene, okay? And um, it's nighttime, there aren't a lot of people, there's no like police patrol cars, there are no like park rangers. So this man, he kind of sneaks out near the water and then I guess he doesn't have like a fishing license or something. And in the United States, you have to have a fishing license in order to fish in any body of water, okay? So he kind of sneaks around and then he see, he, he casts his net into the water. I mean, he casts his, um, his um, line into the water and then he's hoping to catch something, okay? So that's what he's doing. And he stays there and he's pretty happy. He's kind of feeling smug that he's getting away with it. And then these joggers came by. These two really attractive female joggers. They came by and I guess there's like a little, they see him, there's a little bit of flirtation, com conversation coming on. And then they kind of, I, I hear, all I hear is like giggling from the women. And then he kind of tips his um, baseball hat at them, smiles at them. So there's like flirtation back and forth between him and these two women. And then they continue jogging and they, they go off. And he's sort of like looking back at them. And then he's whistling and then he goes back to fishing. When I saw this image, I feel like this is not you. I feel that... You might be dealing with this type of a character where they're kind of opportunistic you know just like just imagine somebody who didn't want to uh, acquire a fishing license and and now he's fishing in a body of water where he doesn't have the rights to fish so he's purposely it, it's like very premeditated it, it's like something that it was planned orchestrated knowing that it's wrong knowing that you know it's um it's immoral or knowing that it's against the law or knowing that, uh, you know, morally that it's wrong, okay? And so I feel like this person that you might be dealing with is a little bit opportunistic. They're opportunistic with the activities that they engage in and the fact that, you know, he's flirting with these two women. I mean, it, it takes two because, you know, the, the women were flirting with him as well. Uh, but what I'm seeing is it's just somebody that like you know I'll, I'll take what i can get you know I'll, I'll take whatever is handed to me i'll willingly take it so i i do feel you're dealing with someone who might be a little bit slimy okay um for some of you for some of you i feel like it might be a relationship partner honestly and then for others it's somebody in your midst that you have a lot of interaction with or a lot of encounters with okay for some of you like family members who willingly uh do the wrong things okay just to see what they can get away with because i, I feel like you know it's somebody who in their defense they don't they don't want to you know hurt anybody like they they're, they're not setting out to like injure someone make somebody cry but then i feel like their actions and their activities and the things that they get engaged in uh, are a little bit morally dubious it's not like they want to hurt anybody but they themselves like they're they, they have a very um shifty sense of morality okay so do be careful with people like this people who can justify and rationalize why they do bad things it's not a good energy to be around okay so i feel like you're dealing with someone who can justify or rationalize and then i do feel honestly um small small minority of you 
might this might be your energy where you're willingly engaging in something that you know you shouldn't get engaged in and you rationalize you know so for example I, what i do here coming up is well you know she was flirting with um so and so so i'm going to flirt with whoever is interested in me okay so that's what i'm hearing well he was um stealing office supplies so it's okay for me to take the stapler and and bring it home you know things like that it's like well this other person so and so is doing it why isn't it okay for me to do it okay Th the thing is you have to you have to know yourself and you have to know where your moral uh compass lies and you have to you know like w what other people do should not dictate what you do okay other people's sense of uh, right and wrong should not affect or dictate your sense of right and wrong just because someone is doing it doesn't mean that you should follow suit so i'm feeling here a situation where morality is very shifty um some of you could be contemplating some type of a uh, getting involved in a situation that might be a little bit sketchy because of some payout either emotional payout or financial payout um and you know it's like ethics and morality goes out the window because you're thinking more of the payout you're thinking about more like oh i'll never get caught you know i'll never get caught i'll never get in trouble i just want you to be careful about that and and then on the other hand if that's not you and you're dealing with somebody like this i do see this energy of you know i'll never get caught no one will ever know if no one knows and if i don't get caught it doesn't hurt anybody right like so that that sense of like rationalizing trying to justify something that you're doing based on the fact that it will never come uh it will never see the light of day no one will ever know it, it you know it wouldn't really in the greater scheme of things hurt anybody so i just want you to be a little bit aware of that and to be a little bit careful about that okay um so your reading kind of like the virgo reading um it's kind of split in half and i'm going to relay the other information in a little bit okay first of all i i feel like i feel like there is a person and you're constantly you know looking at what they're doing you could be checking up on them you could be um you know um either physically checking up on them or through social media or through some type of a uh distance, you know, like texting back and forth, checking up on them through uh instant messaging. There there's something here where you're just like wondering what this person is up to. And the person seems a little bit sneaky. Eight of pentacles, okay? Look at that fox. Okay? Doesn't that scream out to you like I'm doing something shady over here. I'm turning my back. and no one will see. So it it seems a little bit sketch. So I feel like you're dealing with someone possibly could be in your work environment. They could be like a subordinate where you're managing and you're overlooking and overseeing the things that they're doing. And you feel like their your, your intuition is so sharp and you feel like they're up to something that is not good for themselves or not good for the organization as a whole. and you're gathering evidence or you're trying to gather information you're you're you know i feel like you honestly you give people the benefit of the doubt okay it's it's not like you're out there um suspicious of everybody i i feel like you're not suspicious but you feel your intuition is really nudging you and it's telling you something's up this person might be omitting information When I said omitting information, um I feel like, you know, for example, you ask them like, "Hey, what what did you do today?" They might they 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 might, for example, you know, um cut class or cut school or not going to work and and they they would tell you, "Oh, you know, I was at school or I was at work." Okay? Or they might like omit information. So for example, if they went somewhere they where they're not supposed to, they would like say like oh yeah i was at school which they were and then you know omit the the things that they don't want you to uh to know so it's somebody who's purposely lying evasive or like they're um lying by omission which you know people say it's a lesser offense 
just lying by omission, not giving the whole truth. But the reality is, there's something evasive and slippery and slimy about this person. We have the moon here, and the moon is notorious for confusion. Okay, somebody who's purposely like um, either giving you either hiding the truth, lying by omission, or giving you so much information where you get confused. So the, the interaction between you and this person gets more and more confusing the more questions that you ask because they know how to spin out a web of lies and they know how to uh, cover the evidence. They know how to, you know, what I'm seeing is I, I see somebody walking over snow or sand or something that sinks and, and it leaves their footprint, right? And then they, they, they get like a, a branch off a tree or like a little thing off a tree and then they wipe away their footprint. Somebody who's covering their tracks, somebody who's like adept at, you know, concealing information, covering their tracks, getting rid of evidence. And I feel like your spidey senses are picking up this information from this person. You want to give them the benefit of the doubt, but your intuition is pretty much screaming out, they're up to something, they're doing something. They're covering their tracks, they're, they're very good. It's like the escape artist, someone who's very, very good at getting themselves out of sticky situations, okay? Uh, there might be some of this happening in your work environment with a coworker, with a subordinate especially. I feel like you're in a higher position than this person and so you're kind of keeping an eye on them okay so we have here the hermit and the eight of pentacles literally seeing and knowing and keeping an eye out on this person uh, to make sure because your senses are telling you something is up and uh, it's associated here with the knight of wands and the knight of wands usually is a situation where we we like the person okay um, they're someone who's very popular, someone who's very well liked, someone who's quite attractive and just charming and you know, um, it, it's like the, the guy in the office that knows everybody's names, that can chat up anybody, that seems very like um, likable. So I feel like you don't have any, you know, bad track record with this person. They haven't done anything in your eyes to warrant suspicion or hatred or you know, and so you, you want to give this person the benefit of the doubt. I also feel like you might be quite attracted to this person. You might like them quite a bit. You might have feelings for them. You might, you know, carry a torch for them. You might just like them. And so all of this is coming in a very unexpected way, okay? Where your intuition is telling you something and you're trying to prove your intuition wrong even because you, you have a soft spot for this person, okay? Um, what I'm seeing with the moon card, Knight of Wands is like really strong passion and the moon card is like an emotional connection. Um, for some of you, I feel like you might be in a relationship with this person and um, you might sense that they're either withdrawing they're up to something they might resort to a lot of like attention seeking okay they might be like um if you guys have had you know your ups and downs they might like flirt with other people talk to other people just to make you jealous okay and i i don't like saying this information i don't i don't like to you know relay information related to relationships because like we always know whether or not our relationship partner is faithful or truthful or otherwise we, we always know our intuition is, is never wrong whether or not we are able to admit that to ourselves that's another story but I do feel this is not coming in as news to you guys because you might have inkling you might have already had uh, encounters with this person that leads you to believe they are a certain way. So this is not like news. This is not a big revelation. There's no tower here to indicate to me that, you know, oh, 
I had no idea. Okay, so I, I feel like I'm giving you information that you already know that your your hunches are already um, corrupt about. So I feel like there's somebody who who might not be getting enough attention, and they're doing a lot of attention seeking. And um, I also feel as well if you're in a relationship, especially if there has been problems trust issues um estrangement like if you haven't been talking i feel like this person is like swirling away their assets okay covering their covering their ass doing something they're not supposed to and they're covering their ass so that they don't get found out but i do feel like in a way somebody is swirling away their money swirling away their assets if you are um, this, if you have any type of Sagittarius in you, like um, a strong placement in Sagittarius, even a Sagittarius sun, moon, or rising, you might also want to watch that video because um, I did mention swirling away assets, okay? So there's a situation here where things are very confusing. You want to give somebody the benefit of the doubt, but at the third hour, I feel like you can't ignore the signs anymore. That's what it feels like to me, okay? So we're moving on here. Um, so th that's what I'm sensing. What we have here is the Five of Swords. And the Five of Swords, this is a really troublesome card because it usually indicates like a very cutthroat person. Uh, a situation where it's like, we're, we're not interested in the truth. We're trying to prove ourselves right. It's a situation where Winner takes all, okay? It's like leaving your opponent destroyed, not giving them um, any leg to stand on, like uh, wanting to decimate the opponent. It's a situation where, you know, no good can come out of it. So there's a lot of bickering. There's a lot of clucking. There's a lot of like mindless back and forth. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really absolve anyone. It doesn't really resolve um, conflict. It doesn't really lead to anything. Okay. Um, these are what are they? They're they're roosters, and roosters have those um, the the sharp spurs on them. So if they ever get into like a, a fight, they tear each other to shreds. Like there would be blood drain, right? And so that's what I feel like. It's like wanting to draw blood, wanting to argue just to be right, just to be proven right, just to, you know, um, put down the other person. So I, I feel like there might have been a situation here where there's a lot of conflict, where there's lack of resolution, where the two of you might be estranged or might not want to communicate with each other because every time you communicate, it leads to conflict. Like there, there's just like, a lot of the times, uh, couples or people can be very civil with one another. We can agree to disagree. We don't like each other, but we can remain, you know, civil. But I feel like in this situation, that's out the door. That That's no longer an option because there's a lot of uh, distrust. There's a lot of, like, not liking one another. And there's just a lot of, like, um, spying and, and, you know, trying to get to the bottom of things. Try, knowing the other person's up to something and trying to call them out on it, trying to get evidence, trying to catch them in the act. So I, I do feel this energy here. That's not healthy, okay? Um, I would say whatever it is that you're looking for, it is going to come out to the surface. Whatever your hunches have been, you know, um, telling you, whatever your intuition has been warning you about, I feel like there's going to be some truth, some information, some clarity coming to the surface where you look at the information that's given to you and you're just like, I knew it all along. So once again, this is not something new. This is just confirmation. And it's coming out here, King of Swords, communication, news, information, okay? And the sword energy deals with information. It deals with revelation. And with this big sword, it's like cutting through, cutting through the confusion, getting straight at the facts. Um, for some of you, there might have been an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, that you might have been in a lot of conflict with. 
a lot of conflict with. I feel like a part of you, a part of you really wants to、um, salvage this relationship. A lot of you want to、um, arrive at a truce with this person. A lot of you just want to, you know. Smooth things out, okay? You guys are not like、um, conflict and ego-driven people. You guys are like the lovers of the、um, zodiac of all the twelve signs. You guys are like the lovers, the peacemaker, the caretaker, the nurturer. And so you you don't want to be in a situation where you have to have your guard up, where you're constantly hyper vigilant, where you're constantly. Um, you know, operating on adrenaline. You you don't like to be in that 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 state. You like peace and harmony, peace and harmony with your relationships. And I feel like, time and time again, this person, I I feel like they're they're a little bit more conflict driven. I feel like there's somebody here who takes things out of context. It's like, why are you twisting my words? Why are you?、Um, Why are you, you know, taking the things that I say out of context? Why are you purposely misinterpreting what I'm saying? So it's somebody who's.、Um, I feel a certain degree of somebody has been very hurt, and they're on the defense. And so, whenever the two of you communicate, things can be taken out of context. Things can be misinterpreted purposely and distorted because both parties feel very hurt. Okay, so it's a situation here. I feel like there's some gonna be some type of information, some type of truth, as well as some healing that can come out of this. We have here the star. Okay, so it, I I don't feel like it's a situation where it can't be fixed. But in this situation, somebody needs to kind of like step up, be the bigger person, and apologize. Okay. So that's what I'm feeling here.、Um, give me one second. I'm just gonna see, you know, if it can be salvaged. Is it worth salvaging? Is there still like love and 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 that emotional connection that can be salvaged here? So, if this situation can be healed from, can it be salvaged? Is it worth salvaging? Whether or not there's enough love and that strong emotional connection that can be, I guess, like、uh, that that still exists in this relationship, is it worth salvaging? We have here the Temperance card, and the Temperance card indicates to me that something is、um, is is really like tinkering on 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 the balance. Okay, It, it's like. A situation that needs to be approached with kitty gloves needs to be kind of like、um, balanced out, and without the temperance, without the patience and the love and the nurturing, I feel like it, it can go astray. So I do see this might be kind of like a turning point in this relationship. And then we have the page of pentacles. Which indicates to me that both parties might be putting very little effort in this relationship because they don't see the longevity in it anymore. There might also be a lot of、uh, arguments over spending, a lot of arguments over finances, over spending, over、um, you know who's contributing what in this relationship. Okay. There might have been one person who's creating, you know, a, who's generating the money, and then the other person is like the spender. So I, I definitely feel a situation where things are not balanced, where finances and and talks about finances get very hazy and very fuzzy, where somebody is not forthright and 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 you know truthful with you as to you know how much money they have squared away. And then I also feel with this combination with the Temperance card and the Page of Pentacles card,、um, 
unfortunately, I just keep seeing as if somebody might be flirting, giving their pentacles away, giving their time and their energy elsewhere. Okay, so I need you to just be a little bit careful about that. Once again, this is not news to you. If your hunches, if your intuition has been telling you these things, I feel like you're getting some type of confirmation because somebody is like, I'm seeing somebody checking their, their iPhone and then as soon as other people come by, like it could be anybody, they, they kind of close out their browser. That's what it feels like to me, like um, somebody's doing something they're not supposed to and there's a lot of excuses, there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of like, um, it's like outmaneuvering, not being able to corner someone, outmaneuvering someone who's very slippery and sly and... and you know, it's not a good energy for you to be in, okay? Um, what, I, what I do see here is I, I feel like... I feel a lot of you, um, you're, you're hanging on to, okay? And um, let me just shift this way here. Because I mentioned that the, the, the reading is kind of split up. This is one issue that you're dealing with. Here's another thing that you're dealing with. Um, for those of you who have ever read that book, The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne, it's like a high school reading type of a book. So basically, it's about this woman, uh, and this is like back in the days. Um, she she committed adultery and she got found out and she lives in this very small community and so her punishment at the time was uh they they sew a giant letter a for adultery and they they force her to wear it on her chest so that everyone in the community can see so it's sort of like you know a shaming mechanism to get people to behave the right way and they did this because they found out she is not married but she's pregnant so they, they put an A on her chest and she has to walk around with it. And then I think occasionally, every week or so, she has to uh, come to the town square and then she has to subject herself to like the stalks, the gallows, you know, where you put your head and your hand into this thing and you, you, you're stuck there for a certain amount of time. And then at the end of the day, she goes back home. So it's like a public shaming or some type of a shaming mechanism. Where was I going with this? Okay, so so that, that, that's the premise of the story. What I'm seeing is a little bit different, but I, I do see, and in the book, um, the, the, the letter, it starts to burn, okay? Like, it, it, it takes on a life of its own. It's, um, it, it's something that can, you know, like, like physically, it's only a piece of cloth, but over time, it becomes like, it takes on a life of its own. It becomes very burdensome, okay? So that, that's where I'm getting at. Because what I'm feeling here is um, that sense of social pressure, social, like, um, it, it's like the, the, the social expectations forcing us to behave a certain way. We don't want to behave that way, but we do it because social obligation, family obligation, things that are expected of us, you know, not wanting to be shamed, not wanting to be ostracized, not wanting to do anything to upset the apple cart, to do anything to, um, to kind of like, um, to not wanting to do anything to set ourselves apart from the crowd, okay? So I feel like there's something here about conformity. Um, doing something because it's expected of you, not because you want to. And then over time, it becomes a very huge burden on you. I have here the Hierophant, which is about, you know, order, tradition, doing things by the book, wanting to, you know, um, be straight laced. Like, the social pressure in order, like the social pressure is so prominent that you would do anything to kind of like succumb to it, okay? And then over time, it becomes here the Ten of Wands, which is a very, very big burden for you to bear. And that's what I was saying with that Scarlet Letter. It becomes a, a controlling mechanism. 
it becomes sort of like its own entity where physically it's just a piece of cloth but it has the, the social stigma it has like all of these things so honestly for some of you i feel here about you know shame or or feeling this sense of like i don't want to get a divorce because you know it, it's shameful it's shameful to my my household is shameful to my family what are people gonna say what are people what am i gonna tell people well it doesn't matter okay you have to weigh out the option you know is it better for me to be free am i gonna be happier or will i be happier with this relationship that's kind of like at a dead end so i feel like there's this sense of social expectation or stigma that you're not willing to face and it's keeping you stuck in a situation that you're not happy with and then I also feel like, you know, some of you are thinking about the children, the social stigma with the children. What are they going to tell their friends? What are they going to tell their peers? You know, so like these decisions that you're grappling with, I feel like these are personal choices. These are personal issues that really should not involve anybody else. But I feel like you're not making this decision in a vacuum. You're thinking expanding further and further what's my family gonna think what are my friends gonna think what's the greater society gonna think and honestly they their inputs don't really matter okay at the end of the day um because what i always believe is that people are really self-absorbed by nature um, if it doesn't really involve them, they don't really give it the time of day, okay? So they might be sad that like, oh, you're getting divorced, you know, what's going on? Tell me about it. And then out of sight, out of mind, okay? And it, it has nothing to do with just being, you know, self-centered. It, it has nothing to do with that. But it's just like in our minds, a lot of the times things become a lot bigger than they are because it involves us more at the epicenter of it, right? But the other person is not. So then it's gonna be out of sight, out of mind. So you need to make this decision and do what's best for you and, and drown out the noise and drown out the stigma and drown out whatever is associated with it, okay? Because I feel like it's preventing you from making a really big decision that would be so much better for you. And then I'm also feeling as well, um, there is a situation where you or somebody that you're dealing with is holding on to it very, very tightly. Okay, it's like pinching at something, grasping and clutching something and not willing to let it go. For some of you, this could be like an ideology. For others, this could be like a relationship partner. And um, I keep seeing this, you know, romanticized vision of what a relationship is. Like, you know, the, like, the partner does this and then I do this and then, you know, we'll live happily ever after. And I feel like um, that, that, that notion of what, uh, of like what each person is supposed to do might have been thwarted, might have been shattered because the other person is not contributing to it, okay? The other person is doing their part, but they're not contributing to your ideal version of what they're supposed to do. So I feel like there's a mismatch here in expectations, and as a result of it, um, you feel a little bit like shortchanged by this person. It's like, I didn't sign up for this, you know, things like that. And then I also feel like um, I, I'm seeing someone who is really, really stubborn, who wants to have their way, who refuses to budge, who refuses to compromise. And I feel like this uh, feedback loop between the two of you, where it's like you refuse to compromise here, so I'm refusing to compromise here, tit for tat, okay? And uh, it's showing up here. We have here the High Priestess clutching to something, even though we know better. And then this Five of Swords, you know, the clucking, the, the, the mindless arguments and the banter and the situation that really doesn't add anything to an existing conflict. So that's what I'm seeing here. And I apologize, Cancers, that the reading is this way. You have some really good cards that are coming here, so bear with me. 
what I'm seeing as well is um, one of the things that can, you know, really help us kind of like loosen up and focus more on the solution rather than the problem. For some of you, you might be dealing with somebody that exhibits all of these symptoms I told you about. And it's really frustrating because you want to compromise. You're the peacemaker, you're the lover, you're the nurturer, right? So you're encountering opposition from this person and it's becoming very, very difficult. And so I feel like you have to detach yourself a little bit. And what exactly does that mean? Well, what it means for a water sign when you detach is, you know, not get emotionally riled up with this person. Not get emo not become emotionally affected. Whatever they do, don't let it emotionally affect you. So rationalize, I guess, like their actions, okay? Like tell yourself, oh, they do this with everybody. It's not just me that they behave this way with. And honest to God, it's not just you that they are this way with. They're like this with everybody. They might have a habit of sabotaging their significant relationships, you know, their family relationships, their, their deep friendships. You might want to think about, you know, look at this person. Do they have a close group of friends that they confide in? Do they take time for their family? I feel like the, the answer is no. I feel like you're dealing with someone who's like me, 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 and who might also, um, not have these emotional connections with other people and so everything that they're doing is not personal it's not personal okay and then on the other hand i also feel like a situation where both people argue because they want to be right i also see somebody who's a little bit shifty when it comes to swirling away their assets hiding their money not wanting to give somebody uh, a dime not wanting to you know to suffer the financial losses in in the case of a separation for example they're paranoid they're 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 feel they're they're operating from a space of lack so you might have to understand you know all the things that they've been through that have made them like this so i feel like you know they they might be just a product of their environment so don't take things personally okay and i know i know i know it's easier said than done but i feel like it's a situation where um it doesn't bring you any peace of mind if you continue to dwell on this and if you continue to get yourself emotionally wrapped up or worked up in this situation okay because i feel like the burden is is heavy and then I also feel like you're dealing with someone who's shifting. Okay, it's like that see-through, I don't know if you can see, that see-through sword, hiding behind the sword. Um, hiding behind their intellect, hiding behind their reason. Like, it's like, they have a reason for everything. You know, they, they, they rationalize everything wrong that they do. They rationalize, they justify. So you can never corner this person and it is what it is you know you're you're coming to the realization that they're slippery and invasive and the more you feed into it the more it's going to upset you personally and i do feel it's somebody who is uh, itching for a fight for an argument they're very good at it they're very argumentative they're very intelligent and very smart and uh, they know how to outmaneuver everybody not just you so don't take this personally okay try to get yourself in a calmer state because i i feel like you you feel that you can't you can't move on because you don't have all the answers that you need but i feel like just the nature of this person is all the answers that you need does that make sense a lot of the times you know we think about let's just say um Let's say you were on and off, and this is like one of my favorite examples. Let's say you were on and off with a person, right? And um, the, 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 the main problem in the relationship was their flirtations, and they always, you know, you, you don't know whether or not they cheated, okay? But you were constantly on and off. There were months when you guys were officially off, and you saw other people, they saw other people, but, you know, you never, like, got intimate with the other people you saw. And so, it, 
I feel like you might have found out some information that they might have been dating, they might have been with somebody else, and you're trying to piece together the timeline. Okay, we were here in January. We were together January 2017, and then we broke up on March 2018, and then there was like a five month period. You're trying to piece together everything to establish a timeline. And to establish what this person was doing in between those timelines, and what I feel is, it doesn't matter what they were doing in those, you know, in those periods in in the interim while you were together or while you were not together. It doesn't really matter because the nature of this person is you can't trust them, and you have reasons why you cannot trust them. And so, while you're looking for confirmation, the nature of this person is all the confirmation that you need. Okay, so I would urge you to kind of leave the situation alone and and try to move on. I know it's easier said than done, but I just feel like you want the information emotionally. You might have withdrawn. You might have like gotten over it, but. A lot of the times, it's hard for us to move on and 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 you know mentally just cast aside that person, that situation, because we feel like we're owed an explanation. And、uh, you actually have all the information that you need already. Okay, whether or not you're willing to accept it, that is another story. Okay, cancers. I hope. Honestly, I hope I'm way off, and none of you are dealing with this. I I really hope that because this is not comfortable. It's not comfortable for me to read. It's not comfortable for me to dissect. And I would imagine it's really it, if you were dealing with this, it would be very difficult for you. So I don't want anyone to be dealing with this. So I hope this reading is completely off. I hope that it doesn't resonate, and I hope that you're not dealing with this because you know this is like petty stuff. We don't need to engage in it, but. If it does resonate,、um, I hope that you're able to pull through, and I hope that you're able to get clarity, and I hope you can move on and, and leave this behind. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. I do wish you all a very wonderful holiday season. Spend it with people who love you. Spend it with people who matter, and spend it with people who will be supportive of whatever big decisions you have to make in the month of December. Okay. Take care of yourself, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye bye.